home of the stars, through the airwaves and on the big screen. Coming to you live from Hollywood, it's Rated G Radio with your host, Garrett Miller. Good early morning. It's Wednesday, the last live Wednesday show of 2015. I don't know if you can believe it, but I can't. But I'm thrilled that I'm spending the next hour with Rebecca Fisk. She is an intuitive psychic, author, motivational speaker, and so much more. She's going to be joining us in just a couple of moments. Uh, Quick housekeeping on where we've been and where we're going for the remainder of this week. So if you want to go back and listen to any past episodes, you can take advantage of that. And of course, you know, listen for the rest of the week. There's two more exciting days left. On Monday's show, we had actor, producer, writer, Mr. Gary Bloomsack, and we were also joined by Mr. Paul Ben Victor. And you're like, who are these amazing people? Well, they're Hollywood active, uh, working actors. They're, I mean, it's rare that you find people who are in the business who are making a successful career out of what they're doing, and these two gentlemen are. Gary is in charge of this brand new uh, channel called American Theater Channel, and it's going to revolutionize how you see, you know, live theater. You know, it's kind of like how MTV revolutionized the music videos or the music business back in 1980 and 81, and that just kind of took off like wildfire. And Gary's doing the same thing with American Theater Channel. So I hope you go back and check out Monday's episode, and also hear from Paul Ben Victor. He is uh, he started over 50 motion pictures and television credits way too numerous to even count right here today but he's starring in a new show on hbo in february called vinyl so check that out tomorrow is our monthly edition of super gay radio we're going to be changing that to rated lgbt radio in the new year because rob's going to be coming on weekly and we're going to be talking about lgbt issues but uh for one more event of the year and that's going to be tomorrow we're going to he's still going to let me say super gay radio i just love saying that so that's going to be tomorrow night at 7 p.m pacific time and then friday our last show of the year that's live i'm going to say live because i'm going to give you a little secret in just a second we're hosting the second annual miles high holiday with artists represented by miles high productions out of hollywood we're going to have multi grammy winner bunny sigler margot ray and many others in hour one that all starts at 11 a.m pacific standard time so set your your clocks and watches and all of that now in addition to all of that, I will tell you, if you just follow the program right here on the show page, you can get a text or an email that will give you a text or an email every day that we are live, and that way you know what the guest is going to be, uh, what we're going to be talking about, and that way if you want to listen to a music show, you can do that, or if it's going to be a psychic show, you know that it's time to call in, etc., etc., etc. You can also download the program on Apple iTunes and take the, all 8 million shows that we've done in the last four years with you on the road. And there's nothing more exciting on a cross-country road trip than listening to Rated G Radio. Um, the surprise for you, and I don't know if it's really a surprise, but we are doing a repeat of a show we did two Sundays ago. And it's our first Sunday show that we've ever done, but it featured Brian and Chris, uh, Brian and Chris, Brian and Sean Chrysagas, the they're twins, and they're a Christian singing uh, duo that are all over the Midwest and East Coast, and they've been on the show several times. Hysterically funny, but very, very talented, and great Christian um, music singers, and they have a new Christmas album that's out. We're going to replay that fun holiday episode on Christmas morning. So if you want to tune in and have some great original Christmas music in hour one, I will encourage you to do so. I tell you this because... Probably by this time of the year, it's it's you know Jingle Bells and Santa Got Run Over by a Reindeer and all of those other songs. They're wonderful, but they might be wearing a little thin on your Christmas spirit. Brian and Sean have uh, released a new album with 11 new tracks on it and all original Christmas songs. Still, and I said you know I could listen to this in July and still be wanting to celebrate Christmas because it's not you know Jingle Bell Rock for the 8,000th time today on terrestrial radio. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for something to listen to on Christmas. Christmas morning as you're opening up your presents or trying to stay warm, and we will welcome you for that. Tons of new stuff happening in the new year. I will just let you know real quick, and then we're going to get to Rebecca. I've already booked up all of January and I think pretty much all of February as well for guests 
in just in the last two days. So we have exciting programming, and I can't wait to have you back in the new year. Rebecca will also be back. We've already pre-scheduled her for the entire 2016, which is super exciting. And I am honored and grateful to welcome Rebecca back to the show right now. Rebecca, how are you? I'm doing great. Good morning, Garrett. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great morning or, I guess, afternoon, depending on where you are right now. Exactly. Uh, it's a little chilly where I am, Garrett, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weather like where you're at? Well, when we got in the car this morning to take Ben to school, it was 41 degrees. And I know I should That's not complain way. because it's like spring compared to, you know, those of you who are, God bless you, uh, living in the snow. But um, it's a little it's a little chilly here. <laughs> so it's, I it's, like it. I like it. You can always bundle up, right? Well, bundling up, I think, only goes so far. So hopefully you'll have puppies or, you know, somebody to keep you warm and, and snuggled all day today. But I'll tell you, it's sunny and bright here. That If you looked outside, you'd think it's about 80 degrees, but it's 37 degrees this morning here in Huntington Beach, and we're absolutely cold. And, of course, you know, you'll say this is your own fault, Garrett, so stop complaining, but I, I'm leaving the, my door open out to the courtyard so the dogs can go in and out and go potty as they do in the morning because I don't have accidents in the house. And it's cold. I turn on the heater, but they're still in the mode of going back and forth. So I'm just going to kind of in, enjoy wearing sweats for the next hour. I totally understand. And, and it was 37 when we got up, but by the time we actually got dressed and got out to go to school, it was four, it had climbed to 41. I love so, it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I feel like you guys are getting a taste of what it's usually like up here um, this time of the year. But well, that's okay. It's all temporary. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. So before we get started with uh, callers, Rebecca, is there a message or mantra or meditation or anything like that you want to share with the listeners? Well, you know, I actually, uh, you know, I'm always good at talking, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to share a message. Um, I want to talk, I'm going to do things a little bit backwards uh, this time. And uh, Garrett, I appreciate your uh, flexibility with me because you're always so wonderful yeah. with me and just kind of let me do whatever I want to do and I'm really grateful for that. Um, so I, usually when we when we start the show, if I'm going to do a meditation, I start it with a you know let's take three breaths. But I actually want to talk a little bit first and then I want to take the three breaths and then we'll start uh, cool. taking callers um, calls callers calls listeners calls. That's probably a better way yeah. to say that. So you know as we get into the holidays, I kind of talk about this topic um, each year as we get to Thanksgiving and then we get uh, to the holidays that occur typically in December. And, you know, what happens is we get into this mode of um, it's the holidays and I have to be hustle bustle and I have to do this and I have to do that. And so many people put so much pressure on themselves. Um, and I, I don't want to stereotype anyone, but I will say that typically uh, the women are the ones who say, oh, I have to have the perfect meal on the table, and I have to look my best, and I have to get the kids ready, and I have to buy the perfect presents, and I have to do all of these things. And for many women at this time of the year, it becomes a time of stress. It becomes a time of not enough sleep. Uh, it becomes a time of anxiety. And, and you know, the where this stress energy kind of pushes you through the holiday season instead of being able to just take the moments and enjoy them and be present with where you are, wherever that is. That might be in line at the department store. It might be, in, you know, sitting at the red light. It might be um, drinking your cup of coffee or your tea in the morning. Um, but what happens is we're sitting there drinking our tea or our coffee and we're thinking about, okay, I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do this and I forgot to mail that and I have to do this instead of just being in the moment and enjoying whatever the temperature is that you're experiencing, that whatever you're tasting, um, whatever the smells are in the room, instead of being present and just coming to center and enjoying those few moments of quiet and peacefulness, our mind is busy thinking about our to-do list. So there are several things that I want to suggest. The first thing that I want to suggest is um, write your to-do list down, actually take it and write it down. I know that there are many of you who will take your phone and you'll put it all in your phone, which is fine. The problem with the phone is that you have a, you lose a little bit of connection. I know you're typing the information in there. But when you actually take a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper and you write the words, 
there's a different energy that's cathartic that is very helpful versus typing the information in and then going back to your phone and going back to your phone and going back to your phone. If you put it all very clearly on a piece of paper, and I'm talking about a single sheet, if you have more than just the front of the single sheet, you have way too much on your to-do list, okay? Because we're talking about one day at a time, and I'm going to get a little bit more into detail about that in just a moment. But write it down so as you look at the list, you can actually cross the things off as you complete them. But you can also see where are you in the list, okay? So if you have five things to do today and you've reached midday and you've already completed three and you've checked them off, there's a feeling of, wow, I'm actually getting through my list and I'm getting things done, okay? And I don't know about you, but I know for me that when I've done a list in the phone, I don't get the same satisfaction of being able to take that pen or pencil and writing that check mark. For some reason, it just doesn't have the same energy in it, okay? Um, so write it down. You start your morning. If you want to do this before you have your coffee or tea because you're, it's already going in, you know, your mind's already going a 1,000 miles a minute, write it down before you have your coffee or your tea, okay? Um, so the to-do list. Try to limit your to-do list to five things. And I know I've got a lot of people going, oh, I can't do that. I have too much to do. I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do this and I have to do that. Ask yourself what really has to get done today. What really has to get done? Try to make the, the what really has to get done no more than three items. You can go to five. But try to make it so that it's no more than three because if you get those three done and those two things are left for tomorrow, that's kind of okay. It really is. And you have to know that whatever's going to get done is what's meant to get done. The other part of this is if you're relying on other people to show up for you to get these things done on your to-do list, remember that you, ha you can have a reasonable expectation, but don't put too much weight into that. It's kind of like um, I, I had an incident where I was supposed to have a plumber show up at my, at my home, and um, I was told it was going to be, you know, the evening of the day that the incident happened where I had an emergency situation. <laughs> so, um, and nobody showed up. So, and I didn't hear anything until the very end of the day. And it was okay. I wasn't really planning on it. But then I was told they were going to be here the next morning. Um, and between 8 and 10.30 in the morning. And I heard nothing. I mean, I was home anyway because I had things to do. But they showed up at 5.20 that evening. So if I had put any kind of weight or importance on having this plumbing issue resolved in my timeline without taking into consideration that there are other people involved in this, I can't check that off my list, but it's not really even my goal. I mean, yes, I want the problem fixed. But you have to have some flexibility when you are... Um, doing something that relies on somebody else and that there may be circumstances involved with that other person that may prevent you from getting to check it off of your list. All right, so that being said, again, I'm just going to remind you, try to make a to-do list five things or less each day. Take time throughout the day. Do your three-by-three. Three. That's three breaths three times a day. And they can be very quick. It doesn't require a lot of time. If you're feeling stressed at work, if you're feeling stressed in the car, you can take three breaths, and we're going to practice that in just a moment. And bring yourself back into your body. Bring yourself back to center, back to peacefulness, because our natural state is happiness and peacefulness. It is external cues that create stress in our minds and in our body. The, the, the things that we think we need to do that we don't really need to do, okay? And, and I'm going to give you a really, really good example. So, yes, I know today's December 16th. By the way, I have to give a shout-out to my friend Lori. Happy birthday, Lori. You are a gift to the world, and I am so grateful to know you. Have a fabulous day. So there's my little <laughs> sidetrack, but I'm going to come back. I know it's December 16th. I have not done any Christmas shopping. I have not done any Christmas cards. Probably will not do Christmas cards this year. And the fact is, I'm, I am moving. I am moving in less than a week. So my priority is to pack and get moved. That's my priority. And, yes, I know the holiday season's here, and I love the holidays, and it's all wonderful, but that's not the priority. So I don't, I'm not even thinking about that. I have no stress when the commercials come on. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to mute the commercials because I'm not buying anything today. 
And so really get centered about what your own priorities are. Don't make your priorities based on external cues or what you think people expect of you. Come back to center and do what feels appropriate for you. And remember that this season, all of the holidays that occur at this time of the year are about the miracles of love and consciousness. So come back to that place of love for yourself, for those around you that you care about, and and make that what your daily life is about. Bring it back to love. Okay. I think we'll do some breaths. What do you think, Garrett? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So sit up straight with your spine erect, uh, preferably in a chair where the feet you are able to sit in lotus position or you want to sit on the floor uh, Indian style. That's also a good position to be in. If you can't do that, just whatever position you're in is fine. Uh, but we want to we want to keep our spine aligned in a straight um, fashion uh, so that the, the most energy can, can move through us, okay? So what we're going to do is when we take our first de- uh, deep breath, we're going we're gonna to do a series of three breaths. And the first breath we take, we're going to imagine golden light showering down from above. It comes up, it comes down rather to the top of the head, down our backs, our, down through our spine, down outside of our backs and all the way uh, down to our feet. And basically it's going to circle under our feet and come back around the front of our body so that it forms this beautiful first circle but then a cocoon of golden light. And that golden light is compassion and unconditional love. Okay, so when we take our first step, deep breath, that's what we're going to visualize. And when we exhale, we're going to visualize that any anxiety or tension is released through the bottom of our feet and down into Mother Earth. Okay, so we're going to take our first deep breath. Hold it for just a moment, visualizing that golden light encapsulating you. And exhale. Top the bottom of the feet, releasing any stress or tension. On our second breath, we're going to imagine that it's a white light. White light that forms a cocoon of Christ consciousness and protection. Breathe in. And hold it for just a moment. And exhale. Again, releasing any tension that you may be feeling in your body. We're going to take one more deep breath. This breath is like a pink color. It's like a pink color of rose quartz. And it's about love for the self and others. And as you exhale, I want you to imagine yourself gathering any tension or anxiety that you may be holding in your abdominal area and that you push all of that out down your legs and through the bottom of your feet. So now we're going to inhale that beautiful pink rose quartz color. Here we go. And exhale. And when you feel ready, Shake out your hands and your arms and your feet and your legs just a little bit to bring our awareness back into our body. And then, Garrett, whenever you're ready. It's myself off of mute because when I do that, I go... <laughs> and it just sounds really bad. Anyway, so thanks, thank you for that. That's my favorite part of the show. Okay, we're going to actually start off with two questions out of the blog talk chat room. They came in before the show started, so I want to thank Little Fairy and Lexi for their questions. But for peace, if we have time, we'll get to your question. But Little Fairy has asked today if it is time for her to find a new job. Uh, she says, I feel it's time to move from my current job as soon as I find something better, which brings more joy to me. 
Okay. And, and first of all, I just want to say it's so nice to hear from you. It's been a while. So um, so welcome and thank you, and um, I wish you all the best. And I just have a big smile on my face um, that you're here today. So thanks, Lil Fairy. Um, so, yes, I do feel like it's time for you to move on. Um, that's absolutely a resounding yes. Um, the impression that I get, though, is don't be hasty about this. There are still some things that need to be put in order that have to do with your current position uh, before you leave. So make sure that everything about this feels right, because I feel like if you jump the gun on this, there may be something that you miss. And it may be something as simple as don't leave too soon. If you get a job offer tomorrow and you get holiday pay if you're there through the holidays, you know, stay through the holidays. Give the two weeks notice. Give the company a chance. Um, to find a replacement for you, um, do everything in right action. So this is, you know, make sure that you're that you're staying grounded and centered in this process. Um, you know, my impression is that th- 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 I get this feeling of boredom. I get this feeling that you really want to grow and be doing something different. And it's very strong and it's very compelling. And I feel like um, it almost wants to propel you forward in a very fast motion. And this actually needs to be handled more slowly. So if you start to feel anxious or you start to feel really driven to make this happen quickly, take some deep breaths and just relax into it and know that divine timing is working in your best interest. And that right, to have this be a slightly slower process is good for you. Um, you know, we always want to remember that the universe is conspiring on our behalf for our highest good. So um, I keep hearing February for this process to be complete for you. Um, and I also feel like this, is, this may be even a career change, um, but it, it, it's something that you're already familiar with. And I feel like um, this is going to be very good for you, but there's, there's really potential for much more abundance for you financially, um, there may even ultimately end up being a move involved. So just so you know, um, remember that the sky is the limit, but there, don't put any limitations on what you expect of the possibilities and opportunities that are coming your way. Um, so, uh, you know, keep us posted. Let us know. I wish you all the best. This feels really, really good for you. And, again, just take your time, not too quickly, um, but it's coming, and it's going to be a very, very good thing for you. There we go. And she's also written back. She goes, thanks, Rebecca. That rings true. I feel bored there and want to grow. So, Little Fairy, it looks like you're going to be in for some exciting things. So thanks for your question. And our next caller, well, our next question, again, comes from Blogcock chat room. Then we're going to get to Nathaniel and everybody else who's calling in. We've got a question from Lexi, and she says, well, Darren and I spend New Year's Eve together. I told him how I feel, but not sure he feels the same way. I get mixed messages. Okay. Well, Lexi, that's a good question. You know, and I have to tell you that right now I get a question mark as well. I think that I think that Darren cares about you. I, I do feel that, but there's a little bit of a feeling of hesitation on his part, and it's it's it, there, there are two components to this feeling that I have about this situation. The first thing is that there's a little bit of hesitation about getting deeply involved which I know is, is really what you want. I don't know that he feels he's ready. Um, the other thing is there is still some attachment either to somebody from his past or somebody else that is around him that he has not quite completely cleared energy with. Um, and I feel like this other person keeps him from getting too deeply involved with you because he knows that potential with you is um, something that could be much more deep and, and much more long lasting. And I'm, you know, my impression is that he's got a little fear about that. So um, it, it's a question mark right now about whether or not you'll spend years together. I think that he has to decide how he wants to move forward with this, and I'm not sure how ready he is. Um, he doesn't want to lead you on. I feel like he is a good person, but, again, he's not sure how committed he wants to be in relationship, and this other energy is in his um, is in his field because of his not wanting to make that commitment. So just be patient. Uh, I feel like he does really care about you, and I and I feel like he knows who you are, and he appreciates who you are. It just may be a little bit too soon for him. So be patient and see what happens. Um, and I feel like you'll have clarity, but it's not going to be for, I'm going to say, two to three more months. 
as far as getting clarity with him. He's he's confused and he doesn't know what he wants right now. So as long as you're willing to be patient, hang in there, try to let go of any expectations, try to just be present and enjoy his company when you're around him. And um, and in the meantime, you know, it's not a committed relationship. So if you want to go out and have fun, that's okay too. If that doesn't resonate for you, that's also okay. So um, just don't get yourself locked into anything right now. Um, it's, my concern is that uh, you're you're looking at this through rose-colored glasses, and um, and that you feel that there may be more involved here than what is, has actually transpired. So, um, just very very important for you to to stay grounded and centered and be where you are, and remember that this is not a committed relationship, and allow it to unfold and see what happens. Okay, so and, I wish you the best. Keep us posted. So. And she yeah. says, "Thank you. I'll hang in there. This has been helpful." Thanks, Lexi, okay, for your call. And we wish you happy holidays. Okay, so Nathaniel's been patiently waiting here, and Nathaniel's <laughs> calling and asking about a move. Nathaniel, you're live with Rebecca. Go ahead, please. Yeah, oh, hi. How are you? Hi, doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. Good. And, uh, I want to see if you see a move. I think I may have asked this before, but uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, let's see here. You know, the thing about it right now is, I mean, I do see that there is definitely energy about a move around you, but as far as where you're going, that is not clear right now. Um, it's it, the Part of it is timing, and part of it is not having clarity about where to go. And, you know, let me get a little bit deeper here and see what's going on with that. I think, you know, this feels like there are other decisions that need to be made in your personal life before you know which way you're going to go. And the other thing is that you're somebody who likes to do things with thought and meticulous um, energy. And I feel like right now there's a grounded feeling about where you are, even though there is kind of a little bit of antsiness about I want to make a change and I don't know what that is. So the difficulty is that, you know, sometimes the universe makes a decision for you and sometimes the universe waits for you to make the decision. My impression is that right now the universe is waiting for you to make a decision. That being said, there are three possibilities for you. One of the, and, and one of the things that's holding you back, I feel, is tied to a relationship that's behind you and that, that you're, you're still trying to get some clarity and discernment about what that situation is, what that situation was, and, and what you're to learn from that. So there's a, there's a feeling that you'll need to let go and allow whatever completion needs to happen with that so that you can move forward, whether it's in a relationship, even with that person, but at a different level, um, that's possible, but that has to be cleared up. And once that is cleared up, then moving forward will be much easier. It's like clearing that energy allows the opportunity to just be focused on two possibilities like the fork in the road in front of you. Okay. So, so the energy of this, the way that this shows up visually to me is that you're looking behind you to see what you need to know. And it's not that you're looking for direction necessarily as much as you want to have closure and have this be um, complete for you emotionally, energetically before you move forward. And then it'll be much easier for you to discern how you want to go. Okay. Um, I'm actually seeing that there might not be any changes yet. I'm seeing some travel for you in the summertime. And I feel like after after the travel, you'll have more clarity about where you're going and what you're doing. And then it's almost like everything's kind of fallen into place and you move forward and it, it all feels very grounded and very centered. So I want to say I'm hearing probably August to September for you for a move um, and not necessarily before that unless you decide to change it. So I always remind everybody, this is the energy that's around you right now. You can change it if you choose to, um, but this is the energy that's around you right now. And you're saying if I concentrate on what, it'll, it'll uh, accelerate it? If I I'm, I'm sorry, you said if I concentrate on something, it will accelerate the move. Uh, what was that again? Oh, oh, you can change your energy. You, you can change the energy around this. So if you, you know, if you basically put yourself into um, a place of surrendering and allowing and clear intention about clearing whatever money, or money, energy, and money is energy, um, <laughs> about clearing whatever energy is coming up to release you so that you can move forward. 
you know, basically the, the universe responds to our integrity and our intention. So if you have clear intention about, you know, universe, I want to clear the energy that's keeping me from moving forward, or I want to clear the energy that's keeping me from moving to a new place or getting a new job, you ask the universe, and you will be given the opportunity to clear that energy. Now, it may be, it may show up in more um, extreme forms than it would have if you just allow and surrender. But if you want to move through it more quickly, you can. So it's whatever your intention is. Now, um, I could move somewhere in the same city, or, you know, I kind of want to move out of the city. Do you think I should move somewhere in the same city to kind of uh, help that, or do you think I should stay I, where I am and move out of the city? I don't, I mean, right now, what I'm seeing is that it's up to you and your intention for timing, but my impression is that you move to a different area than where you are right now, definitely. Yes. So it's, it's, um, you know, my impression is you're going to travel. When you travel, I see you going someplace tropical. So oh, I don't know cool. if it's Hawaii or the Caribbean or Tahiti that is so or, cool. you know. That is but, so cool. but that's where I see you. And I, when you come back from that, you will have the clarity that you've been looking for. So, oh, so I'll just take a vacation? I'll just take a vacation yes. there? So I'm not. Uh... Yeah, I see you're taking a vacation. And when you come back from this vacation, you have the clarity that you need, and then it'll be happen very quickly. It'll happen within a couple months. Okay, Nathaniel, good luck to you. Thank We're gonna. It's time for us to move on, but have a happy holiday. Keep us you posted. Too, Thank you. Thanks, Nathaniel. Thanks, Nathaniel. And Sharon is our next caller, and Sharon has a. We'd like a general reading. Sharon, you're live with Rebecca. Go ahead, please. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you. Hi, Sharon. Oh, thank you. Okay, can you like a, a just a general reading? Okay. Yeah, please. Okay, so the very first thing that comes up is there's a bit of a feeling of I, I'm not really sure what to do now. There's been some nervousness, I want to say, around the health of a loved one. I want to say this is a female. And that, um, you know, that situation is kind of resolving itself. And so now there's a feeling of I'm not really sure what to do now because – it, it, I, I feel like you've always been doing things that have been in service to others, and now you have an opportunity to maybe do something that you want to do for yourself, and that is a, a, it's an unknown for you because you've always you've always been taking care of others, you've always been a caretaker. Right. Right. So right. so now it's like, what do I do with myself? And so I want to say, go have some fun. You get to do things that you want to do, that you've wanted to do, that you haven't had time to do, um, and it really is about giving yourself time for joy do you know i mean i could see going to the movies i feel like um i'm not sure if this is a uh, there's something crafty quilting or sewing or some type of a so i want to say that there's a class that you've wanted to take that you haven't that you haven't done you've kind of you've learned on your own but there's always been somebody else who's been the impetus for you to go and do these things and so now it's time for you to get to do it maybe it's cooking but it's something creative um, where you're using your hands and, um, you know, even going to movies. It's like I see you, you know, getting the opportunity to do some things that are just fun and joyful. And it's been a very long time since you've actually been able to do that. It's it's like it's okay as long as you know that whoever you're taking care of is having a good time, then you give yourself permission to have a good time. But if it's just you right. on your own, right. you're always looking for the next thing to do. So. Right. I really, I really, really want to very strongly, with a lot of emphasis, <laughs> encourage you to start doing things you love. Start bringing joy into your own life. You bring joy and love and care to so many people around you, but you don't leave any room for yourself. So now it's time for you to leave room for yourself and actually start investing in your own energy and your own joy. Okay? That's, I mean, that's really a priority now. I just don't have any finances to do any of that. I don't even have it to survive. Okay. Well, let me take a look at the financial for you here in just a second. So, you know, the first thing that comes up is um, I do feel like there, there, there is my, either money in an account or there is an opportunity for you. To, there is something that is there that you're hesitating to use. And I feel like this is this is your last resort that you've kind of been trying to hold on to. 
but I so I no. do feel like they're all okay. It, it may be coming to you, but I I want to say that there okay. is there's one. There's one opportunity. Um, I don't know if it's a 401k or if it's a, a there is there is some account where there is some money. So I don't know if that's coming to you from a loved one. I feel like it may be coming from money that may have been your father's or something like that. But there is there is money in an account that is available that you basically have said no. I'm not ever. I'm either not touching it or you're not aware that it's there. Um, and it's not a lot of money, but it is something that will ease the burden that you have. Okay, um, I'm talking about little things. I'm not talking about anything extravagant as right. far as things that you no, can do to bring yourself joy. Okay, okay. Um, so um, are you already, I know this sounds silly, but the thing that came to mind is are you doing crafts? Do you do craft fairs? Um, no, but I been thinking about it okay so go ahead and do that that's what's coming to mind that's what's coming up is go ahead and do some of this it's something that you love to do you get to do something you love you get to bring joy to somebody else and it'll bring in a little bit of money it's not a ton but it's something that will basically support you having more joy in your life and that's really the priority right now i mean even if it's going to the library and checking out books that you like to read it doesn't cost anything to do that. But if you like romance novels or if you like, you know, murder mysteries or whatever the genre of reading is that you enjoy, go and give yourself permission to do that. You know, feed your soul a little bit. Right. Okay. That's, I mean, really the priority for you right now is self-care and self-love. So, yeah, uh, so give I, yourself I, permission. Yeah. I, uh, I'm wondering, I have wondered if there is, finances somewhere that I don't know about. That's well, again, I have the impression that there is some money that is put away that is yours. So, um I would ask the question because that's the impression I have. And like I okay. said, it's not a ton of money, but it'll certainly ease things for you. And I know you're somebody who doesn't want to use it unless you absolutely have to. But it'll get you through and you won't even have to use all of it. So so ask some questions. Thank you, honey. Oh, you're so welcome, Sharon. I wish you all the best. Thanks for calling in. Happy holidays. Thank you, Sharon. Good luck to you, and keep us posted next month. Uh, let's go to uh, the chat room real quick. We've got, our, I think, our last question out of the chat room we'll get to today. It says, this is from Dove for Peace. And Dub says, hello, I'm looking for, I'm looking to leave my job as soon as possible. It just doesn't feel comfortable for me. I feel stuck in a cube. I'm not included in any team meetings. The list goes on. I deserve a better place to work and a nicer people to be around. I'm looking to move on in January or February. What do you see? Well, I, I heard January before you even told me January or February. Um yeah, it's, you know, give yourself permission, finish out the rest of the year. And, you know, the thing is that I want you to really focus on what does your perfect day look like, okay? So this is part of what's in my book, The List. I'm going to give a, um, a little shameless plug here, <laughs> which Garrett usually does on my behalf. Um, but there's a book that I wrote called The List, Tools to Create the Life of Your Dreams. And the thing about this is, you know, we get when we become adults, we start thinking about all the things that need to be done. We look at responsibilities. And we stop dreaming about what it is we really want to be doing. You know, we ask a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, then we grow up and we're far away from those dreams. So what I want to suggest to you is take a few minutes when you know you're going to have some quiet, uninterrupted time. I want you to sit and get quiet. And then I want you to imagine that all of your financial needs are met, that you don't have to pay anybody anything, you're debt free. And what that feels like. And when you have that feeling in your body, then I want you to think about, if I could get up today and do anything that I want to in the whole world, what would I be doing? What would it look like? Where would I be? What kind of money would I be making? And then I want you to start stream of conscious writing about all of that. Okay? So don't edit it at all. Just allow yourself to write whatever comes to mind. You know, maybe set the timer before you do this process for like 20 minutes. You just allow whatever comes up. And it doesn't matter if other thoughts come into your head, but just keep writing, okay? And then go back. When the timer goes goes off, go back and, and um, put everything into a positive. So I work with team players who are supportive and competent. Uh, I am paid very well, whatever the number is that you are looking for for salary. Um, 
but get very, very specific about what this feels like to be at work every day. Like you can't wait to go to work because you love it so much. Okay? Whatever that is. And then start imagining that it's already here, that the universe has already created this perfect position for you. And now your job is just to be open enough to look for the opportunities that show that it's already here. Okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to start practicing this every day, this feeling that this job's already here, and what is it, and where am I, where am I going to be? And, you know, show me, where is it, where's the job? Okay, so start practicing this now so that you can be done by the end of the year and this can show up for you in January. Because, again, that's what I feel is that it will be January. Okay, okay. There, we so, there we go. Yeah, anyway, and okay. thanks so much for the question. All right. And, and our next caller is Mike, and Mike is calling about love. Mike, you're live with Rebecca. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Hi, Mike. How can I help you today? Hi. Yeah. I, well, um, I've uh, I've moved to California. I moved on November first, and things are growing fantastic. And and I've met a woman uh, who literally moved to the area that I did two days after. And I mean, we've been pretty much inseparable uh, friends type of thing. But you know, just kind of want to see if there's any direction there. Okay. What's her first name? Uh, Lisa. Okay. Okay, so I do feel like there's potential, but I feel like she's definitely not ready yet. She's um, she's enjoying everything the way that it is right now. Uh, I feel like she's gun shy. I feel like she's had some difficulties with relationships in the past, and she's not ready to jump into anything. She's very much enjoying the companionship with you, and I feel like as long as you continue the way that you are, it's going to grow into something more. But I feel like probably spring into summer, she definitely needs some more time. It takes her a very long time to trust people. So you may have already noticed that, you know, if she needs help with something, she's very hesitant to accept it, or she'll say, that's okay, I'll do it myself. And it's because she just, she's, takes, it takes her a long time to, to get um, into trusting somebody in her life, especially when it comes to relationship or men. So I would just continue doing what you're doing. Um, I think she's a very kind person. I think that she tends to uh, run when she gets scared or she feels like things are, are are getting too um, too deep too quickly. Um, she tends to be somebody who kind of withdraws or or runs. So, keeping this as it is for right now is is the very best bet. It has to to um, grow slowly for her. That's that's just the way that she operates at this point in her life. Um, yeah, I I mean it feels good all the way around. Wait and see what happens. Um, okay. Just slow and steady. Just take your time. Awesome, awesome. No, you're yeah. you're you're right on point with that in regards to the trusting and so forth. And uh, she's already said that she, you know, she she trusts me more uh, now than any anybody in the past. So it's just like mm-hmm. cause there's no there's no agenda. Right, exactly, and that's and that's the, the perfect thing about this. Um, it's yeah, keep it like I said. Just keep going the way you're going. Um, this is a really big thing that she's even told you that she trusts you. So that's yeah. that's a really big deal for her. So, and I'm just going to keep yeah. doing what I'm doing. I mean, if if other opportunities arise, then you you just you know you go for that as well. Yes, yeah, one thing at a time. But it, like I said, as long as you're willing to, you know, let the flower bloom slowly. <laughs> that's yeah. really that's really the way this has to be. But it is a flower, and and it will continue to bloom um, when given the nurturing and time that it needs. So you just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing awesome. Thank you okay. so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. You're so welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And just a real quick reminder, and I haven't plugged Rebecca enough today, so here's the deal, folks. If you like what you're hearing with Rebecca and want to have a private reading with her, you can go to IamRebecca.com, fill out your 411, and she'll contact you and um, get something set up for you and provide her rates and all that good stuff. But one of the things that she's doing that's, I don't want to say new, but newer for Rebecca this year are group events. And group events are perfect for bachelorette parties, birthdays, anniversaries, uh, just family get-togethers, barbecues, neighborhood, you know, things and 
stuff like that. So if you're interested in doing something fun with a group of your friends, contact her at the I Am Rebecca website, fill out your information, and go from there. You can all There's a link on the show page right there to also like Rebecca's fan page. You can do that and stay in touch with all of the cool things that are going on in Rebecca's world. But do contact her if you'd like a private reading, and you get her all to yourself, and you don't have to share her with all the other listeners of the radio show. So I'll encourage you to do that. Um, we've got uh, about 15 minutes left in the show. We're going to get to as many of you as we can, starting with Jasmine. Jasmine is calling today for a general reading. Jasmine, you are live with Rebecca. Go ahead, please. Hi, Rebecca. Thanks for taking my call. I just wanted to know what's coming for me uh, for the new year. Okay. Okay. Hi, Jasmine. Thanks for calling in. Okay, well, you know, the first thing that I have to say is you're just kind of like you want something new in your life. I feel like you just kind of like doing the same old thing. And um, I wouldn't say frustrated because that's too strong a word, but it's kind of like, yeah, you're looking for something new for your life. Um, Let's see here. Because, you know, the thing is that you're kind of the life of the party and, and you're kind of tired of being the life of the party. You'd like somebody else to take the reins and entertain you for a change. <laughs> um, so, which, you know, and, and the, the thing is, it's, um, how do I put this? Um, you're kind of like the queen bee, I have to say. So, oh. um, it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's a fun energy. I know that you like having fun. You expect people to behave a certain way because you do things for the right reasons. So, mm-hmm. it's, you know, I, I get that you don't have a lot of patience for people who do things that are not in integrity. I get that, um, you know, if somebody isn't loyal to you in, in friendship, that that's kind of it. You know, you might hang out with them, but you don't trust them anymore. And that's right. okay. So so kind of part of what's been happening for you is discernment. And, you know, being able to discern who you can trust and who you can't trust. And I feel like, you know, maybe your circle of friends has gotten a little bit smaller this past year um, because you're starting to see people more clearly for who they are and who who has their own agenda and who's really showing up to be pleasant because they truly care. So I, I want you to, to to take the lesson without lamenting the fact that maybe the circle is smaller. Um, it's one of those things where it's quality, not quantity. And so, right. again, I feel like that's kind of been, I want to say the last two to three years, that's kind of been what's been happening for you. So what's, what's going to continue now into the new year is that you're going to see new people coming into your life. Um, I want to say you're going to see, you're going to have people who come in who may be mentors for you regarding your career. Um, and also people that are better examples for you to look up to just um, to see how you can get where you want to be and just to, to be um, more fully present even in your own life. Um, it's it, it, Some of what's been happening in this last, I want to say the last year or so, is also determining who you are and what you really want in your life. Um, you know, I, and kind of questioning, you know, who am I and why am I here and what am I, what am I supposed to be doing? So you have a lot of... Um, you know, deep thoughts, I guess, is the best way right. to put this over the last year. And, again, um, you know, letting go maybe of some friends who, who haven't really shown up for you. But as you let go of what doesn't work, it makes room for new opportunities for the people and situations and, and opportunities that work for you. And so that's what's happening, okay? So I see a lot of of. I want to say I see a lot of joy coming for you. I want to see new, I'm I'm seeing new opportunities. Um, And I'm seeing some new people show up in your life, um, maybe who seem to be more like you, who have more of the same core values. Uh, And, you know, the way that you show up for people, they're actually showing up for you. Um, Because I feel like there's been a lot of disappointment for you in the past. Uh, with people that you show up for, and then they just don't show up for you. So a lot of that is is changing for you as we come into the new year. And I feel like this is going to be a very good year for you. Lots of new things, lots of possibilities, um, opportunities. I feel like, um, you know, the childlike wonder of all of of the the joys and miracles that just come from living day to day, um, you're going to see and have a new perspective. On, on all of those things to be grateful for. So um, it's really going to be a very good year for you. Um, Thank so you. So continue, continue being choosy. Be discerning about who you allow into your circle. Um, you're going to find the quality of your life changing in a really beautiful way. Okay. <laughs> You're so welcome. No, thank you. Thanks, it's, it can be 
it can be hard, the growing pains, when we're letting go of the old stuff. But when it's stuff that doesn't work, the, the pain initially is, is difficult to deal with. But once we let go, we have a sense of peacefulness and relief. And so just remember, that's what you're getting to. And then what comes after that is amazing. So anyway, thanks so much, Jasmine. I wish you all the best. Thank you. you thanks, too. Jasmine. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And we're going to try to get two more callers in. We've got Camilla calling about her career next. Camilla, you are live with Rebecca. Go ahead, please. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Hi, Camilla. Hi, you're so welcome. Okay, so a question about your career. Let's take a look here. Okay. So right now, the impression that I have is it's it's like you're behind a wall. So it's like there's nowhere for you to go where you are. You have to go around this. Hmm. Okay, and and I know that you already know this. <laughs> um, it's it, it's it's um. Gosh, let's see here, because it feels very like very stuck, and mm-hmm. so it's almost like the the image that I have is that you are against the wall and there's nowhere to go, and you're going to have to back up a couple steps so that you can go around. So my impression is this may mean that you need to take a couple more classes or, mm-hmm. you know, get some more studying under your belt. Um, but if you're willing to take that step, um, you will be propelled far beyond where you are now. And I want to say that if you're willing to look ahead, even to 2017, which is basically just over a year from now, um, mm-hmm. to 2017, 2018, you're going to move up very quickly. And then in 2019, be where you are, you know, be or rather be where you want to be. So it's, you know, right now the reason that you're so stuck is because you're being given the opportunity to see that if you make some slight changes and you invest mm-hmm. a little bit more in yourself, um, it's going to make some huge changes for you, for your career and for your happiness in your career. So, it. What, so, so whatever this is, these these other these classes or the the image that I get or the idea that I get is okay. So if you're studying nursing and you're an LVN now. And but you can't go anywhere. You go back and get the RN because then you have so many more opportunities. So that's that's the analogy that I'm given to use as an example for you. Okay. So go back and take a few more classes or do whatever it is that will get you uh, where you want to go because you can't go any further than where you are. You're really good at what you do, and and you're you're very. Um, You're conscientious, you're detail-oriented, you're very, very good, but there is nowhere for you to go, so you've got to make those changes. But but the rewards that will come for the rest of your life, it'll be worth it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mella, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. you're so welcome. Keep us posted, okay? Happy holidays, (laughs) Mella. And our last caller for 2015 is coming from Lisa. And Lisa is calling about love today. Lisa, you're live with Rebecca. Go ahead. Oh, I am lucky indeed. I really am. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm i calling about me and my boyfriend. Today, everything is really swell. Uh, yesterday, okay. not so good. And okay, I, so, so Lisa, I'm sorry to cut you off. Don't tell me anything else. Okay. Um, I appreciate that so much. What's what's the first? What's his first name? Robert. Robert. Okay, so give me just a moment here. So you guys have a push-pull thing. You, you absolutely have a push-pull. I see that you, you are very close to each other. I see that there's a lot of love there. Um, but I, I also get it's like he comes towards you and you're pulling away, and you come towards him and he's pulling away. And you guys, you know, when you get it together, it's really awesome. But there's a lot of this push-pull that occurs fairly frequently, and, you know, I get that there's a lot of passion, and so it, it, it's almost like the one of you who's pulling away kind of pouts a little bit, and so you've gotten into this pattern of basically chasing each other when the other one's kind of pulling away, and then you kind of both have tantrums, and it doesn't work. So you need to change the way that you guys are working with each other in terms of either hurt feelings or communication. You you have to change your communication, okay? So if there's something that you're wanting i mean i well okay so i will ask you one question so this this most recent disagreement that you had um part of this is you guys are having reactions based on previous either relationships or situations in your life that have nothing to do with each other 
So, and I'm just going to use this as an example. This is not intuitive. This is me using it as an, uh, using an example. So let's say you, you say, hey, Robert, I want to go out and have Chinese food tonight. And he says, no, I don't want Chinese food. I want Mexican food. And you say, well, we had Mexican food last time. I want Chinese food. And he says, no, we didn't. We had this. And you guys start going round and round and round. <laughs> and it's a really silly disagreement. But what's happening is, you know, you get your feelings hurt because you want something, and he's basically not saying you can, he's saying no, he's not going to support you in that. And then he's arguing with you because he wants to get what he wants. So there's several different things you can do. You can say, hey, I want Chinese food. I'm going to go get Chinese food. You can go have Mexican food, and I'll meet you later. Or you can decide to make something at home instead because you can't agree on what you're going to have tonight. There are other ways to handle this than getting your feelings hurt that you're not getting what you want because the reality is you always have a chance and a choice to meet your own needs. It's what you're expecting of the other person, and it's the same thing for him. He always has a chance and a choice to meet his own needs. It's what he's expecting of you. So what happens in relationships is that we get into these roles that we think you know, we, we think we're supposed to be a certain way. We think we're supposed to behave a certain way. And we have expectations of ourselves and the other person that we're not even necessarily aware of. And it causes friction in the relationship. So instead of being able to just show up and be present, we have an expectation about, from that other person. And then if, if we want something and we want the other person to acquiesce and support what we want and they don't do it, then we get hurt. So we always have to remember to step back and realize we have a choice about how to proceed. If you really, really, really want Chinese food tonight, go get Chinese food. It's not dependent on him. I know you want to spend time with him, but you can spend time after Chinese food, or maybe you'll decide that spending time with him is more important than having Chinese food tonight. And I know I'm using a really silly kind of example, but these are the dynamics that are occurring in this relationship. I get that you two care very much about each other. But I also get that there is reactions, and, and, and either one of you will kind of go, well, fine, I don't, you know, do I really need to be in this? And the reality is you really do care about each other. It's just that communicating and allowing the vulnerability to come in and saying, wow, you know what, my feelings got hurt. Let me, let me take a look at why my feelings got hurt. That's not happening. You guys need to start working on that part taking responsibility for your own emotions. Does this make sense? I know I'm kind of giving you a lot of stuff, but this is, you know, in a nutshell, it's about taking ownership of your own emotions and expectations, letting go of the expectations and just showing up and being present. And when the two of you can start looking at that within your own lives, the communication is going to be better and the relationship will be better. But the love is there. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, does that make sense? Well, Rebecca, she has dropped the line, so she okay. got the message that she needed. So with that, okay. thank you, Lisa, for your call. We appreciate you calling in. We've got a minute left, so I just want to take this time, Rebecca, to thank you for being on the show all year long in 2015. I'm so excited to have you back in the new year. You've got so many projects and exciting things that you are working on right now. I can't wait for them to be at a point where you can share more with the listeners and it's just been, you know, a sincere pleasure to have you here. For everybody who didn't get on the line today, I want to remind you, you can go to Rebecca's website. I've got a link right here on the show page. Just click here to go to Rebecca's website and fill out your 411. You can schedule a private reading in person on Skype over the telephone, and Rebecca will provide you her rates for her services. You will enjoy your reading, and I encourage you to do that. You can also go to um, Amazon and buy her book, The List. It's available on Kindle. And I've got mine. I just downloaded, re-downloaded mine not too long ago, and it's a great thing to do over the holidays as you start to take a look at what you really want to do in your 2015. So with that, I want to thank everybody for being part of this fun experience and welcome you back into the new year. We will see you live on um, January 4th. But again, we've got two more shows tomorrow on and, um Friday with the Friday Day Dance Party with Miles High Productions. It's a pleasure having you here. We love doing this with and for you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. You've been listening to Rated G Radio.